Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. The new screensavers is brought to you by Hover. Register a domain name with Hover and build your brand today. Go to hover.com slash twit and save 10% off your first purchase. And by FreshBooks, the easy-to-use cloud accounting software for small business owners. Try it free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash NSS. Mobile World Congress 2018, a dash cam roundup, and gas delivered to your car. Live from the Twit Eastside Studios in beautiful Petaluma, it's the new screensaver. Screensavers episode 146, recorded Saturday, March 3rd. How did it get to be March? March 3rd, 2016. Mm -hmm. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Megan Maroney. Welcome. Hi, you look great. Thanks, so do you. You got some skulls on. Ah, uh, Dia de las Muertas. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's spooky, isn't it? That's not today, though. Like all, no, it's not today. <laughs> like all my shirts, this one comes uh, via Winton, not Winston, Winton Churchill, who sends me these from uh, Salvador de Allende oh. in uh, Mexico. And uh, they're made by Abrazos Design. And they're just, I love these shirts. And I have maybe a dozen of them now. I'm just collecting them. So thank you, Winton, for these uh, shirts. Well, we got a big show for we you today. We do. You Tell the know? folks what's going to happen, man. You want to know about dash cams. We want to know about dash cams, the little cameras in your car that can record everything, like if you're picking your nose while you're driving, those kinds of things. Or if you're getting robbed, we've got some suggestions for you. Leo has his favorite. Rick Paul from The Wire Cutter also here to give you some suggestions. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, this new dash cam that just came out, it is a hoot. Cause it <laughs> comes from Owl. <laughs> I didn't write that. <laughs> But you read it. I did. And you didn't have to. I did. Mobile World Congress wrapped up this week in Barcelona. Sherilyn Liu from Engadget was there. She's going to join us in just a little bit. She, You loved her video that she took of the streets of Barcelona at night. I did. Yeah, wow. it's, it's great. And uh, Jason Howell has a review of the Datally app. It's an Android app that can help you control your mobile data not to use too much. And Megan has found the ultimate in laziness. Mm -hmm. She's, she, she literally, this is so you don't have to go to the gas station. The gas station comes to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a new service. I don't know. We'll see. Called Phil. Oh, like you've never forgotten to fill up your gas tank and all the time yeah well triple a will come with like a teaspoon of gas enough to get but this is not that this mm -hmm. is like well, well you'll see mm -hmm. it's coming up uh first the news of the day of the week it's been a very interesting uh, week all round let's see our hot topics of the week have been stolen from me here it is <laughs> i have them right here see written right here yeah. I, I can't even believe this you have to fill me in on this so Equifax last year announced that they had lost some, what was it, 14 million customer records. Now Equifax, as we mentioned last year, is one of those credit consumer credit reporting agencies that collects, you know, all your private stuff, all the credit cards you have, all the loans you've taken, all the, everything you've done financially. This is a necessary service, I guess, because if you're going to get a loan, somebody has to say, well, Megan's a good credit, you know, is credit worthy. Leo, not so much. But these guys, I think because they have all this information, have a higher duty to higher responsibility to keep it safe. They've announced another 2.4 million people were yeah. affected. Mm -hmm. I think we all thought we were affected, so I don't know. Just if assume really, you were. Yeah, assume, and they handled it so badly, and nothing seems to have happened to them. That's what galls me. Congress has done nothing. The FTC has done nothing. Furthermore, Equifax has actually made money on this by signing people up for credit monitoring services, charging them for it. I, I just, it's shocking. It's shocking. Apparently, everybody, all the regulators are taking a nap. And uh, good timing for Equifax. That's all I can say. It's just disappointing. Uh, we want to congratulate our sponsor. I hope they're not a former sponsor now. <laughs> the Ring Video Doorbell, folks. I'm so proud of Jamie and his gang. 
they just got sold to Amazon. We're not sure for how much, but it's apparently more than a billion dollars. Something between 1.2, according to Recode, 1.2 and 1.4 billion dollars. It would mean it's the second largest acquisition for Amazon right after Whole Foods, which is a lot more. Uh, don't know what Amazon's going to do with uh, Ring. We had a conference call with Ring scheduled uh, yesterday, and they didn't show up. I think they're busy <laughs> cashing the check. I don't know. <laughs> well, we spoke to Nick Wingfield, who covers Amazon for the New York Times, and he said he thinks they might be using it for like insurance purposes. Like if you can see what's going on outside of your house, like you know who's coming and going. And also if you have a security camera, like maybe your home insurance would go down so that maybe Amazon might be getting into the insurance business. Really, that's that, a yeah. stretch. But if Nick says so, I guess it's it, it, possible. They, it they could just want this uh, business for their own. Remember that Amazon looked at buying uh, another lock company called, begins with an A. I August. Can't August. Uh, declined to buy them and then decided to create the Amazon key service, mm -hmm. which is the one where there's a camera in your house and the Amazon delivery person has access to your home, but they can't do anything because they're on camera and then they <laughs> drop off the package and they leave. This they uh, invented right after they stopped talking to August. So it may be that Amazon just wants to be in, in this business. What I hope is there'll be an influx of money into Ring. They have a lot more good ideas. They just announced a, secure, a secure home security system. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot more that Ring could do. They do. Here's where there's a natural synergy. They tie into the Amazon Echo. You can use the Echo with your Ring. And so I imagine... This, by the way, is interesting because Amazon has stopped selling Nest products. They, apparently, there was a conference call that we're learning uh, now from Steve Kovac, who had a scoop at Business Insider. There was a conference call in which the N Amazon retail team told Nest, look, we're not going to sell any of the newer products. We're only going to sell your old stuff, to which Nest's reply was, then you're not going to sell any of our stuff. So it was kind of half and half. Amazon cut off the top and Nest cut off the bottom. Uh, I, you know, this is an escalating war between Amazon and Google. Nest is owned by Google. That is only going to get more vicious. Well, because Amazon is usually pretty good about allowing other services on their services. Yeah, why should they care? Right. So I think that, um, but Google's been bad. You know, we, we used to be able to watch YouTube on our Echo Show, and you can't yeah, do that can't anymore. Do that. And that's Google's fault. So I wonder what... Um, well, it's hard to ascribe fault because, for instance... Uh, Google was doing it in a way that Amazon said, well, that's not really good. You were just wrapping the web page. Amazon was doing it in a way Google didn't like. Right. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it, I, I'm not convinced that there's one side at fault. I think both of these companies don't like each other, and neither one's doing exactly what the other one wants. It's bad for consumers. But uh, it's like when you compare Amazon products to Apple products in terms of, like, Apple, you can't get anything on the HomePod, whereas you can get pretty much anything. Yeah, but remember, Amazon wouldn't sell Apple TV right. for Right, so that's a where they time. get, yeah, they yeah. don't sell their things, which is a big deal if you're not sold at Amazon. They're not ruin required you. to. You know, you go to Target, they don't have to sell Nest or Apple or anything like that. Nobody mm -hmm. complains if they don't. They just go somewhere else. Um, this just shows the power of Amazon mm -hmm. in the market, I yeah, guess. Yeah, because, like, the ADT and other alarm stocks went down after this purchase. So I, I mentioned, Johnny Jett on the radio show today mentioned his new uh, social network called Vero. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, Johnny, I joined it too. I, all of a sudden, everybody joined V-E-R-O. It's iPhone and Android. It's actually kind of a, a pretty social network. It emphasizes content as over text. So when you press share on Vero, it says, oh, you want to share a picture, a link, something you're listening to, a TV or movie a TV show or a movie you're watching, a book or a place, it really encourages that kind of posting. And as a result, all the posts on Vero are kind of have rich content. There's text, but a lot more. So it's a kind of Instagram meets Twitter. There's Aunt Pruitt in his Superman shirt. Uh, and the other thing I really like is there's commenting. So it's a little bit more like Google Plus, too. So you post something, people actually can comment on it as well. Uh, but... Here's a couple of interesting data points. First of all, it's been around for two years. Yeah. Who knew? They're 2015, right? So Everybody's signing up for it now. So, but... And That's that, the way it, this stuff happens. It is. Social networks, they grow like a hockey stick. They're on the upswing of the hockey stick, and so they had some server issues. But, as you pointed out, there's also been some questions about the founder. Now, I want to be judicious. I don't want to accuse him of anything. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's stuff floating around that he, in his previous startup... Maybe he didn't pay. That was in this uh, Lebanon, he, or he's. I think he's Saudi. He didn't pay workers, and workers got stranded. I don't know what the merits are. He denies it. He said I'd left the company before then. His Wikipedia article was suspiciously edited. 
it's not clear. So let's set that aside. Okay. Would you not use the service because you didn't like the guy who started it? Uh, well, I stopped using Uber for that reason. Yeah. So, yeah. But, I mean, sure, if it was, like, Google Photos or an iPhone, maybe I wouldn't. Something I really love. I can see but do I need another social network? It's very easy to say, no, no, I don't I don't need another social right. network. What I really if it's something you really needed? It. Yeah. Like, you feel like, like, some new social networks are all about FOMO, right? Um, what am I missing on Vero? Right. Like, you you and Ant Pruitt might be having a really interesting conversation that I want to see. I want to be see, part of that. I like the software. I think it is, it, it's, it's promoting good content, promoting conversation. Because it's early days yet, uh, there's no trolling or weirdos. There's no Nazis. Uh, that won't last. That's a plus. That won't last. But on the other plus side, they're going to make it a paid service, which means no advertising. So you, what you see is what you get. They said the first million who join get it for free forever. Uh, I think you and I got in under the wire on that one. Uh, they now have their, apparently up to 3 million users. It has really zoomed up and they did put a message on their website saying well we're not we're not going to start charging you yet so if you join even if you join after the first million you're still going to have uh, free forever i think though there is a really interesting conversation about whether even if this if the software suits it's really nicely done there's a great net, network of people on there but the guy who started it there's is maybe a little shady does that bother you or not and i'm i'm not sure about that i really i, I just don't know i don't use if you don't use Uber, it's not just because you didn't like the corporate culture. It's also because they were doing things mm -hmm. that weren't so great. There's no right. evidence that Vero's doing anything wrong at well, all. Well, no. I mean, I think as soon as I started to hear, like I just saw on Twitter, I Justine, I think, was the first person that she said, joined it. check in to, but yeah, she was promoting it. And then someone said, you better check in to, you know, then there were some rumors, like maybe they're made by the Russians. And there's all this like, oh, is it, a, is it the Russians trying to suck up all our data? But I don't, it's not that, but there is something questionable there. And then all of a sudden I thought, oh, I I joined, I gave them my contacts, I threw everyone under the bus, and now I feel horrible about it. I'm going to cancel my account. <laughs> and I tried to do that. It's very difficult That's to cancel the other your problem. account. It's hard to get out. Yeah. So I think that is always suspicious to me. It may also be that it's just not well designed and they'll fix that. I mean, that's, you know, software has problems all the time. And, you know, just because the designers never thought anybody would ever want to cancel, for instance. I, you know... Should people not join it? I don't know. I, but there is something that where you get that feeling of like, oh, there's a new social network. I'm not on it. I need to be on it. And I do think that's a good trap for scammers right. because that's a way that you suddenly think, oh, you know, like, oh, you're afraid of something. His father, uh, by the way, the peop there are people on Vero who are furious that uh, the founder, Eman Hariri, has been tarred with this brush. They say it's very unfair, very angry people defending him. His father was the prime minister of Lebanon. Uh, and so the so the construction business he ran was shuttered after his father was assassinated in 2005. I think there's a lot more to this story. I'm not asking the question about him. I'm asking if if it matters to you who founded the company and if that means you don't use the software. Uh, and I don't know about that. I don't. I mean, that's certainly one way you can protest it. But, I mean, my, my thing is, do I need another social network? I like this. I would rather use this. I, I, you know I took Twitter and Facebook and Instagram off my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, not because there's anything wrong with Mark Zuckerberg or, or Jack Dorsey. They're perfectly nice fellows. But I do, I do think that we are living in a world where all of a sudden, like, all these people that we might have been communicating with on Facebook and Twitter turn out to be Russian bots. And, Who cares? Well, it's a little Who bit. Who cares? I care. Well, it's, um, don't follow them. You think this is created by the Russians? There's well, no it, evidence it's there, created by no, the Russians. No, there is a Russian team that coded it, but that doesn't mean yeah. that it's the Russians. Hariri not... says he created this because he was on Facebook and he noticed his friends were acting completely abnormally on Facebook. They were showing off. He wanted to make a social network that was positive, that didn't that let people act authentically. I like that. What's wrong with that? I, I like that, too. You're nothing if not authentic, Leo. He's worth $1.3 billion, according to uh, CNN. I... But also, we should say that like some people were complaining and like looking at the terms of service and saying you're surrendering all your videos. That's true. That's Every the one same. of these, yes, you say you, they say that, and that's uh, that's legalese. I think you can misinterpret that. It's because services have to duplicate this stuff, put it on multiple servers. 
I, until something that somebody until they do something wrong, I know I'm not. I'm going to give Vero the benefit of the doubt. I like it. It's a nice network. I'm going to stay on it. You can get off it. That's fine. I, I you have uh, the choice. I do. Actually, you don't have I the can't, choice. Actually. You can't get off it. No, I try. <laughs> that bothers so me a little bit. I yeah. agree. Yeah. All right. Let's talk uh, Mobile World Congress. Joining us right now, in Gadget Reviews editor Sherilyn Lowe, who is a little jet lagged. She's just back from Barcelona. Hi, Sherilyn. Hey guys. Hey Leo. Hey Megan. Do you have fun? Too much. <laughs> Potentially too much. I don't want to dig any deeper, okay? That's fine. I'm glad. How was Mobile cool. World Congress? You think it was an exciting show? Was there a lot of uh, great stuff? This year was a little strangely quiet. Um, you know, it was the year Samsung returned to MWC to launch its flagship S-series um, phone. But then everyone else, you know, whether they had nothing to share or they backed away and didn't want to you know, compete for attention. There just wasn't as much interesting stuff in by way of major flagship announcements. You, LG was there, but they didn't have a new G series flagship. Instead, they updated the V30 flagship from before with some software tweaks. Um, and just, I think the fact that also it was, you know, strangely bleak and cold and wet in Barcelona may have uh. contributed to me and my team and I think a lot of us on the show floor just feeling very, you know, glum about everything. I what? have to say, when you go and you see the Asus Zenfone and they're selling it because the notch is 26% <laughs> smaller than the Apple iPhone, that's when you go, okay, we've this has all gone too far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's peak repurposing, peak, peak cloning, yeah. peak yeah. everything. <laughs> what about the banana phone and like feature phones? Was there sort I of I want a, the banana phone. Was there a sense that like, oh, these phones are too fancy. I want to spend less time with my phone. I mean, I think there's always going to be a sense of that, that people are, you know, sort of averse of technology lately. But the the banana phone that you see up there, I personally want one. Yeah, because <laughs> um, it's the but, phone Neo used to get out of the office in the Matrix. Mm -hmm. There you go, except for it wasn't yellow, didn't look that much like a banana, I don't think. <laughs> they, um, they, they do sell a black one, I think. <laughs> yeah, they do make a, a black option, which is nice. But HMD has done this before, right? HMD is not is, right. is the new parent company of the Nokia branded phones. And last year when they did their big, you know, initial debut launch of the Nokia 1, 3, and 5 series of Android phones, they did the 3310, which you right. are seeing on screen now, um, which really got a lot of hype. So last year, MWC was insane. Everyone was crazy about these 3310s. Even if Samsung wasn't there, Nokia had like so much attention, not just of the media, but of the public. Everyone was invested in that phone, which is kind of weird, but in a good way. But let me ask you, Sherilyn, how many of your yeah. colleagues actually use a 3310? Now or now. in the past? <laughs> Zero, I'm willing Zero. to Zero. Zero. I, I, not for one of trying, because I wanted to get one for myself, just for like a, a teeny phone I can put, throw in my purse. Okay, to go out. all right. You know, and there's a 4G version now, so <laughs> who knows? Look, it don't give me that. You have all the latest phones. In fact, I, do. I think I saw you holding, am I wrong, <laughs> a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus? I am holding on to a Galaxy S9 Plus right now. I'm not sure if I can show it to you guys uh, here. You can't hold it up? I think I can. Go I mean, ahead. It, <laughs> oh, wow, it looks slab. so different from every it's, other black slab of glass. It's <laughs> rectangular. <laughs> now yeah, in rectangles. Yeah. But it's, what we can show, because you posted on the CNET, uh, on your engagement right, gadget, CNET, on your gadget <laughs> site, you posted it, is this video that you shot in Barcelona. This looks, now this is not shot with the S9 Plus. This is some fancy camera. No, it is. It is a. It's a fancy camera that our video producer used. Um, yeah. yeah. No. So we, what we told was. Look at this. Was, look at. Yeah, look at that. This is. This is low light. This is brilliant. <laughs> we went out testing the Galaxy S9 wow. Plus in low light, and these are some of the p sample pictures you're seeing right here. This is a shot that I got. These are shots that I got of fountains in, wow. you know, Barcelona's uh, square in Gothic Quarter, and it just looks super bright thanks to that new f1.5 aperture that's the widest ever of any smartphone so far um and yeah as you can see it lets in a lot more light for much brighter pictures in the dark we put it to the test because we were kind of skeptical as to whether like 
would you really benefit from that? Or would you see other issues arise from having such a wide opening? Because as you can tell from some of these photos, the background is just completely blown out where it's bright, right? So you, you see the shops in the background, they're just completely, you've lost all information in those lights. But when it's in the dark and you're, say, in a really dim room, that little that wider opening is going to come in really handy. So I, I know there's a pro mode and there's an auto mode on it. Um, I am not a pro, and when I start to mess around with f-stops, etc., um, I, I get scared. So we're the, I know now we're seeing the pro mode, but was those photos that you just took were those auto mode or pro mode? You you were seeing two versions. So the the ones that you see where stuff is blown out and really bright, that's auto mode. And then when you saw uh. like a split second later the two chairs that had some of that background information retained, that was when I switched over to pro mode. And I think you're about to see the difference right now. Yeah. Um, and then the Much better. Next shot, there you go. Pro mode really exactly. is nice. Yeah see that you see in in pro mode and all honestly megan it doesn't take all that much time to sort of learn and figure that out if you were interested um it's just a matter of kind of pushing dials here and there and what the nice thing though is that with the f1.5 option in pro mode you are able to play with different settings like iso and shutter speed to either get a you know more stable clearer shot or reduce noise due to like high uh, light sensitivity so, I have so to that, say, all the modern smartphones, the iPhone 10, the V30 that you talked about earlier, the Pixel 2 XL take great pictures. But I'm, but do. this DxO Mark has now given this a 99, which is the highest score it's ever given on a smartphone, and said that uh, the, the still capability is 104. So while it's just a point, maybe or two better, and I think that. Some people are going to prefer the iPhone 10 because of its color rendition. You know, there's there's some things better in each of them. This is a very very capable phone. You know, the other interesting thing, DisplayMate just announced today that it's the best screen they've ever seen, as close to perfect as you can get. Is that your impression, Sherilyn? I mean, I like it so far. I do. <laughs> I do think that. <laughs> well, that's you know what? That's a real world thing. Uh, you know, we're not talking about measuring it with your little spectrometer and things like. Yeah, it's fine. It, it's it's green. It does get super bright. I mean, which helps right when you're out in uh, bright sunlight. Um, the colors are rich, but Samsung's been doing really great super sure. AMOLED screens for a while now. It gets to a point where my eyes can't tell the difference. Yep. But thankfully, there's people like DisplayMate. They're doing the hard work for a lot of us. So, so I know you have a Pixel, and you have the this. She has gonna, them all. You have all the phones. So, if you're in a low light area and ah. you need to take a photo, what do you pull out of your pocket? Good question. Man, I don't know just yet because, you know, I haven't put the S9 Plus through all of its paces. Um, and so far, because my primary phone is the Pixel 2, it holds up really well. Um, you know, there's a lot of comments. People love its HDR uh, feature. I will say that, in my opinion, Google Photos, that app, has so much good processing that yeah. that brings to the table with the Pixel 2 that your photos are just going to come out stunning. I can't compare the two, and I'm not going to just yet, just because, again, like I said, I haven't mm -hmm. done that testing. Um, but, you know, I just feel like the Samsung could be a strong contender in terms of low light. So is the Google Photos going to do different processing to the photos that you take with a Pixel 2 than yeah. an iPhone or the Samsung yeah. phone? Yeah. I mean, if you, so it depends on what you do. So like Leo is saying, built into the Pixel 2 is, yes, Google Photos processing because the pictures are saved to the Google Photos app by default, right? But if you use an iPhone and you also have your photos backed up to your Google Photos account, it will also do some of that. It will suggest to you, hey, this is a stylized version of that shot you took with your iPhone. Hey, here's a panorama I stitched together. So that's what I really like about Google Photos. It's, it's smart enough to tell when to do these things for you. Android Go, that's a new Google uh, kind of clean version of Android. Was There were some Android Go there uh, as well, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Android Go was announced uh, a while ago, I believe uh, almost a full year ago. And what we saw this year were three phones that were actually running the software. And they, the premise here is that in this year, if you buy an Android phone that costs less than 100 US dollars, you're going to get something that's running probably Android 7 or, you know, not the most modern. And it's not going to run super smoothly. You can't download all the apps that you want, right? The idea with Android Go is that you can get a sub $100 device and still get Android or Oreo, which is the most recent. And it'll come with apps like YouTube Go or, you know, Gmail Go and stuff like that 
things, apps that run lighter with less requirements of RAM or ROM or processor or is not as taxing on your processor. So you can get a smooth, decent experience even without the most high-end specs. And this is good news for anyone that doesn't want to splurge really on a phone that you just use to communicate. I also think that it's going to be interesting to watch. I've seen some people speculate Android Go may be the next Nexus phones or the next Google fo Google Experience phones because there are some companies promising high-end, high-spec phones to running Android Go, which would be very interesting. So we're going to keep an eye on that. One more question. 5G. Was there any 5G there? There was only, there was all 5G <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> there was nothing but 5G. <laughs> I mean, you know, before I even left for MWC, my inbox was full of 5G That's pitches. So funny. That's so funny. And then, you know, when you get there, everything you see is a 5G banner. So I personally checked out a couple of demos. Um, one was at Intel's booth. Uh, there, You're seeing now the 5G capable PC or two in one, which hides sort of a 5G radio in a kickstand. Now, this is a concept, right? OEMs don't oh. necessarily have to use this design. But it is a glimpse of what you can achieve with 5G speeds in a convertible like that with ideal situations like no interference. Not a lot of people are using the network just yet. You could stream a 4K video, um, you know, at full 4K resolution on that 4K display over 5G. You're getting about four to five gigabit speeds, which is really like really fast. You're going to see no lag whatsoever. Basically, imagine if you're watching in that demo, it was Wonder Woman. If you click play, usually you have to wait for the video to load. In, with the 5G, theoretically, you're supposed to click play and not have to wait at all, and everything will just play through till the end. Um, that was just one demo, obviously, and Intel had a lot of other applications of 5G to show. It had a 5G-capable car where people could do conference calls from inside the car, but also have the cars talk to each other, um, if that sounds weird to you. <laughs> no, that's important. That's a big part of self-driving cars is this inter- Exactly. So it's for yeah. traffic management, it's for yeah. uh, accident avoidance. It's right. a lot of 5G. 5G is going to facilitate so much of that. I also saw behind closed doors, and my article about this is going up soon, is that uh, Qualcomm has been able to use a blend of 5G and on-device graphics processing to push a really high-res immersive VR experience to a headset. So this was a very controlled situation where we were in this room above their booth. No one else was about supposed to know. And they had a base station up in the corner. They had a receiver in the VR headset. And this was with millimeter waves that is you know, crucial to 5G technology. And the latency that I experienced, the the high res quality of it was definitely like beyond anything I'd ever seen on a mobile VR headset just yet. So interesting. There's a lot to come with 5G, yeah. and I think end of the 2018 was where everything got real exciting. So nice to talk to you, Sherilyn. I'm sure you'd like to take a little nap. I talk a lot. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't talk enough. Uh, but I don't want to keep you too much longer. Thank you, Sherilyn. I appreciate your time. Thank and you so much. For everybody, sh on. we've got a little scoop. You want to read her article uh, all about 5G coming up <laughs> in Engadget. She is reviews editor there for Engadget.com. Thank you so much, Thanks, Sherilyn. Sherilyn. Nice Hi, to talk thanks to for you. having me. We won't talk about the sangria. That's <laughs> Save you didn't even let her respond to that. No, that's, uh, uh, there's some beautiful pictures of sangria. That's all we'll say. <laughs> beautiful. Their glasses are full. There's nothing. Uh, I misspoke. I meant to say Android 1, not Android Go. Android 1 is going to be oh. the future, I think. We'll What's see. Android Go? Go is the low cost oh, okay. for developing nations, sub $100. But there's also Android 1, and it's easy to confuse them, which is still on low priced handsets but it's it's Google's kind of stripped clean version of Android and there's some speculation that they that there may be manufacturers who decide to put it on their phone without all the frills and bells and whistles and those phones will be very responsive they'll be quickly updated uh, directly from Google and if they put them on a flagship phone that could really be the true Google native experience but not on Google hardware anyway that's that's something to find out about. Do you ever feel there. like there's someone in charge of naming stuff at Google and Android and they're like a, a, a four-year-old because yeah. they're just like, yeah. Yeah. they've well, got this, they've got that, the names are horrible, they all sound the I same. I did get confused, but that's because I'm a four-year-old. <laughs> um, we are going to take a break, but we have lots more to talk about in just a second. Jason Howell is going to show us an Android app that will keep track of your data use. That could be very important. It's your data ally from Dataly. 
or is it your data ally from Data Lake? <laughs> I don't know. But first, a word from our sponsor, Hover. Oh, man, I live on Hover. Anytime I get, you must be like this. People get, oh, I got a name. <laughs> Like, I got an idea, oh, I got an idea for a business. Quick, register tuniktime.com. Mm -hmm. So I did. Mm -hmm. Never used it. Yeah. But I got it. Goats wearing clothes. Goats wearing clothes. I have an idea for a podcast. It's called In Bed with Tech Journalists. Perfect. And Now, you could make that one. You don't have to just go with the .com on that one. You could have In Bed with Tech Journalist Ninja. <laughs> in Bed with Tech Journalist Pizza. Hundreds of top-level domains and counting at Hover.com, and it couldn't be easier to register for them. And I love Hover because they don't try to upsell you every minute of the day. When you go to Hover, you get Whois Privacy automatically. That's part of the price. They know you want that, and they don't try to sell you hosting and a bunch of other stuff. Basically, Hover's business is domain names. And if you are going to buy a domain name, it's the place to go. And you should. Everybody, for instance, should have a domain name for their business. Everybody should have a custom domain name for their email address. That way you can have Hover forward it to whatever, you know, today you want to use Gmail, tomorrow you want to use something else. You don't have to change your address, right? Everybody should have that. And Hover makes it easy. More than 400 domain extensions to choose from. Like the .me. Leo.me. Unfortunately, Leo is so short, everybody, there's nothing available. I did get, I, I got a couple I'm excited about. I'm not going to say but I got some Leos I'm very excited about. Leo.actor, Leo.alsace. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Leo.art? Art. Art. Leo.art, Leo.asia, Leo.associates, Leo.at. Actually, I got Leo.ist. Because mm. I thought, the you know, Leoist. like the nerdist, I could be the Leoist, right? Mm -hmm. it, but it actually, I think, I don't know where it comes from. But anyway, I got it. How many domains do you own? Hundreds. And they're all at Hover.com. <laughs> Hover's Connect feature means once you get a domain name, I do this all the time, it's easy to connect it up to uh, many of the website builders. Like, look, there are a few of them, WordPress, Squarespace, but also Tumblr and Google Plus and 500 pixels. Uh, it's uh, Facebook even and Flickr. So, in fact, I have a new one, Leo.camera. Just mm. see where that goes. Go oh. ahead. That goes to my photos. Good idea, Leo. Uh, and I got it at Hover. It made it easy. If you're sending a resume to a potential employer, what about... Dot me oh, look at to that. showcase what you're all about. Become your own best brand advocate. ME domains are on sale right now, this month only, $9.99 for a year. That's 33% off your first year. And if you're new to Hover, you can even get an additional 10% off any domain extensions offered. I get a discount because when you own a lot of domains, they give you a discount mm -hmm. too. So you get a discount coming and going. Go to hover.com slash twit. Check out their deals. Get your portfolio website up, your business website, your blog, and have a custom domain name from Hover.com. You'll get 10% off any domain name at Hover.com slash twit. That's on top of, on top of the 33% off discount for .me. You really ought to have the .me. Yeah. Just get your name Also me. get Leo. Go to Leo.camera because you can see his self-portraits. Look it. It's my camera site. <laughs> no, because I, you know, I, ha I keep my photos on Smug Mug, and for mm. and it was a, it's a long URL. And I thought, you know, I ought to get so this I did this last week. Leo camera, and that's where my photos are. Right? This it's just Hover is so great. Hover.com/slash/twit save ten percent off your first purchase. I think I have Leo Laporte.me. I think somebody else has Leo.me, which makes someone me, selling Leo.me. Yeah, that makes me sad. How much do they want for it? Let's see. Probably a lot. I'm not going to do it. I don't. I feel like people are squatting on my name. Mm -hmm. They are. Get off my name. Five thousand nine hundred ninety-nine <laughs> U.S. dollars. Yeah, they think Leo's going to come along and just like write him a check. No, I have Leo Laporte. Me. That's all I need. All right. Uh, it is time now to find out about your. I think it should be pronounced Data Ally, but I think they say Data Ally. Jason Howell, how do you say this? Data is currency in this day and age, and that means that using a lot of data when you're out and about could translate into a deep hole in your pocket. Google knows this, and recently, somewhat silently, they released an app that might help you to rein in your data allowance on Android devices. The app is called Daytally, and on its surface, it's a bit of an extension of the data saver feature that you might have found in your settings that already exists on most current versions of Android. Daytally is all about giving you controls over what kind of data consumption those apps that you have installed on your device are able to enjoy.
At the heart of this deep control is this data saver slider within the app, which I'll go ahead and slide to on. And in doing so, Daytali is activating a secure VPN on the device that allows the app to analyze and restrict data access to any apps on the device, and you can choose what those apps are. This is not a traditional VPN. So in other words, no data from your device is being rerouted to any external servers. It's all happening on your device in order to aid with analysis of what your apps are actually doing. Uh, with Data Saver Active, you can then choose which apps have data access and which ones are cut off, at least for the time being. Tapping the lock next to the apps in the list that you see here, that's going to allow you to toggle those states very easily and on the fly. And up top, you can see an easy to read graph that kind of illustrates the data consumption that's taking place on that device and how much total data was consumed at those times. It even ties into your data allowance with your carrier if you give it access to your phone number. If I'm ready to let my apps fly free of all of these restrictions, I can simply toggle the data saver back to off and my phone is back to its unrestricted data habits. All that data flows freely. Daytally also has this button to find Wi-Fi, which is kind of curious. It uses your current location to scan for known free Wi-Fi hotspots in your local area. You might have to drive to Starbucks or maybe walk a block to log into a free access point, but it's yet another way that you can avoid spending your mobile data allowance by opting instead for publicly accessible and free Wi-Fi. This is actually similar to what Google's own Project Fi devices do dynamically to help Fi users save on their own data consumption. Daytally is part of Google's ongoing efforts to provide low data, low bandwidth options for many of its own services and apps. And it could come in very handy, particularly when you're traveling outside the country. This is one example. I'm Jason Howell, and you can find my Android reviews on All About Android and discussions with people who are making and breaking tech news each and every week on Tech News. So what did he found a third way of saying it? What did, how did he say it? Dad Ally? Dad Ally? Dad Ally? Dad Ally? Dad Anyway, Daily. Daily. We got to call these guys and say, how do you say it? I bet they don't know. Daily. Daily? I don't know. Do you say data or data? I think you sound nerdy when you say data. That's the data. It's data. You say data? No, it's. No, data sounds nerdy. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Make up your mind. Check out the data. The data. <laughs> uh, uh, the data says you're a nerd. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's do a call for help. That's what we should do. Javier is on the line from San Diego. Hi, Javier. Hi. Great to see you. Welcome to the show. Oh, I love your Hello Kitties. Look at all Thanks. those. Oh my golly gosh. Yeah. How many do you? And then look, there's the Marsh Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, mm -hmm. and uh, and the the ghost from mm -hmm. Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. Wow, you've got quite a my few. My husband and I are collectors. Oh, that's so cool. And then what is this over uh, below the uh, Hello Kitty ones? That's an interesting one. Transformers. Oh mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, we got caught I got up. distracted. Sorry. It's easy. <laughs> what can we do for you, Javier? Hi, um, so I recently got a new car and I want to install Yay. a dash cam in it, oh, but yeah. I'm not sure which one I should go with. Um, I know some people use GoPros uh, for that function, but I want something that's a little sleeker and fire and forget, something I'll start yeah. with the car and yeah. I don't have to do a whole lot of data management with it. So I think that's pronounced to your input. data. <laughs> data. Uh. <laughs> Just teasing. Uh, <laughs> Megan thinks, uh, crazily enough, that you could just get a mount for your phone yeah. and put it in the window. Mount, phone mounts, and then put your phone on there, get an app. There are lots of free apps, but everyone thinks this is crazy, and it might not be started. Well, I'll give you it. a couple of problems. One, yeah, it's gonna, you're going to have to plug into the cigarette lighter. It won't be start. It'll have to boot up. Uh, well, maybe you unplug your phone and you're going to have to, every time you get in the car, put your phone in there. The other thing is if there's sun shining in the window, the phone gets hot mm -hmm. and sometimes it will f stop working. So there's just a whole bunch of issues. Fortunately, do we have somebody smart knows more than Megan and I do about all of this. <laughs> Thank goodness. And he's on the line with us right now. Rick Paul is here from the wire cutter. Hi, Rick. Hi, how you doing today? This is like a my Woody Allen moment, you know, when he's yeah. in Manhattan, he's waiting in line, and somebody's spouting off about Marshall McLuhan, and Woody mm -hmm. says, well, I happen to have Marshall McLuhan right here. <laughs> so uh, we don't know anything about Javier. We thought we'd get you an expert, and that is this guy right here. You're, you're the one who reviewed all the dash cams, right, Rick? 
Uh, yes, we did a, a guide to dash cams and wire cutter, um, and uh, we looked at about uh, oh, 50 different models and tested 12 of them. <laughs> I hope you didn't you drive the car did. like yeah. that. <laughs> Do you suggest using no, all 12 at once? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have that on the road like that. Uh, I, we, it, it was a, it was a, a bit of a, a task to get a photo of that while on the road. <laughs> it was. Uh, so, it up. <laughs> there are rules about what you can put in the windshield depending on your state, too, right? That's something to be aware of. Oh, definitely, yeah. There are some states that don't allow uh, you to put anything on the windshield. Uh, California, you can only put it in the corner of the windshield. Right. Uh, so, yeah, you really have to ch kind of check your uh, your state regulations for that. So one of the things I always loved about uh, the wire cutter, way, way back to when Brian started it, was we're going to pick the one. Right, we're going to make it easy for you. This is the one. So, what's the one? The one. Uh, well, the one that we picked is uh, here. Well, here I have it right here. It's oh. the Papago uh, 535. It's affordable, it? 130 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a solid little unit. Uh, it uh, gets a, a sharp 1296 uh, p resolution. Wow. Uh, fairly wide field of view, but it's you know it's it's real affordable at 130 dollars. It's easy to use. Uh, it's it's and and it's a relatively small size, which is important too. So you know it's uh, you know it, it was the one that had to hit the sweet spot for us the most out of the 12 we tested. And these cameras, for the most part, hook up into the cigarette lighter or the accessory adapter. Is that how they power themselves? Yeah, pretty much they they plug into the 12 volt outlet or the cigarette lighter, whatever <coughs> you want to call it. Uh, some of them can be hardwired if you want to go that route, and that then leaves your uh, outlet free. You can go to an installer to do that, obviously. We, tested, we, yeah. we use the cigarette lighter. Yeah. And then uh, how do they work? I mean, they're always shooting video, or they shoot video when you tell them to, or they have accelerometers and shoot video when there's a crash. What triggers video on these? Well, if you uh, most of the time, if you just set it up uh, according to instructions, you, when you get in the car, turn on the car, uh, and start going, it's it's it starts recording right away. Okay. Uh, so that's nice. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to remember to turn it on. Uh, now you can turn it off if you want to. You, you often you have the option of turning on the sound or not. Uh, and uh, and then if it, they do have G sensors in them, so if there is an accident. Uh, you know, it will automatically trigger and it nice. will save that section of video. And that's important because uh, the video will keep looping. So uh, it'll start overwriting when it runs out of room on the card, it'll start overwriting old, old footage. So uh, by locking it in and by saving that, uh, that crash video, uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that's a good thing. Hmm. So does it record out and in or is it just recording what you, what you would see out on the road? That depends on the model. We uh, we tested uh, a, a variety of different ones. Uh, most of them just look outward, uh, but uh, but you know, there are some that you know you can you can put a rear cam or a rear yeah rear cam onto the rear window and see what's in back of you if you oh. were to have your front and rear covered. Oh, uh, cool. And there's ones that uh, have two cameras in one housing, so you're seeing forward. Plus, you can capture. Uh, video of the interior of the car too, and that's great for uh, ride for hire drivers, like you know, taxi drivers, mm -hmm. uh, Lyft, you know, Uber, uh, mm -hmm. or anyone that wants to record what's going on inside the car. Javier, what do you want a camera for? I guess we should have asked that. What are you looking to do with your camera? I just want a backup for security. I right. had a recent incident where um, some debris fell off of a truck and hit my windshield, and there was really no way to prove that which car had come off of. That's a really good use for it. Uh, and I run into stuff, gardener equipment, gardening equipment and stuff on the road. I've done that a couple of times. It would be really handy to have proof to give to your insurance company. Uh, mm -hmm. So you could say, well, this is what happened. It's not my fault. I like that. Of course, if somebody backs into you, um, they might say, oh, no, you rear-ended me. This way you'd have video to prove that. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like this idea. So, so what about price? I mean, that's an issue. We had someone in the chat room saying, oh, I got one on Amazon for $18. It works perfectly. <laughs> um, you know, some of them are $50. Your like, what, Papago I mean, is $130. Uh, you, get, you get 10 times more? <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Uh, I, th I think if you get much under a hundred dollars, you're kind of getting into the realm of you get what you pay for. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think you know we saw some excellent uh, dash cams in the uh, 100 to 150 range. 
Um, and like I said, the Papago is 130. Uh, and, and that's where you're going to get the sharp uh, imagery, the good, the good imagery, you know, the good, you know, got a good solid package. Uh, and and that's, that's really important. The image quality is ultra important in this because we saw a big difference in our testing of, for instance, uh, the truck uh, uh, that, you know, dropped the load, Javier. Uh, you know, if you can't capture the license plate of right. that in sharp to be readable, you know, then it's not going to do you any good. Very good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Papago Go Safe 535. I saw $130 on Amazon, even less at Walmart. But before you rush off, stay tuned because I have a new uh, dash camera that I am very impressed with. Rick hasn't had a chance to see it. No one has. It just came out called the owl and i'm going to give you a quick look at that as well so that might be another one you want to think about rick thank you so much for helping us rick is at the wire cutter and of course it's the first place i go now owned by the new york times congratulations mm -hmm. uh i for years i've recommended it on the radio show every time in fact i don't i'm not an expert on dash cams i don't know anything about it but fortunately rick's done the, the, lo the legwork so i always say well i don't know go read the wire cutter <laughs> i go there for everything not just yeah. the tech stuff everything I don't you buy got anything. household yes, housewares everything. all sorts of stuff mm -hmm. now. yeah thank you rick i do hear it and, and stick help. around if you want because i'll be talking about the owl in just a second i'd love to get your opinion and thank sure. you javier i hope that helps you yes it does thank you <laughs> yeah great thank to talk you. to you i think it's a good idea in fact i'm thinking i should get one for my uh, teenagers mm -hmm. Uh, my my adult kids. It would. It's a really useful thing. That you see them all the time. Remember when that um, that what was it a comet a meteorite that hit the lake in Russia and there was a lot of video of it because it turns out every everybody in Russia has a dashboard cam. Mm -hmm. I think they have a lot of head-on collisions. I don't know, but everybody in, <laughs> they have a lot of there's a lot of insurance disputes. I don't know, but for some reason everybody has a dashboard cam. So there was all this video. Which is is pretty cool. They yeah. should. We were talking about the the ring before um, and insurance. They should give you breaks on your insurance if you have a dash. Because you can document what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to show you the owl in just a little bit. But if you want to ask us your tech questions for our next show, here's how you do it. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. I'm going to go rip my dashboard camera out of my car so I can show you the owl in a second. But first, a word from FreshBooks, the easy-to-use cloud accounting software I first discovered when I was suffering. I was suffering in 2004 having to do my invoices every end of every month. I hated it. I hated it so much sometimes I wouldn't do it. And I found out if you don't send out invoices, you don't get paid. FreshBooks solved that problem for me. It was actually Amber MacArthur who told me about it. It was a company just started up in Toronto. Now here we are, what is that, 14 years later. FreshBooks has 10 million customers. They are the best and they've gotten better and better. It starts with invoices. They make it very easy to create an invoice. It looks good, it's professional, it's got your logo. You don't have to fire up Excel or Microsoft Word. No, you just do it all in the simple to use FreshBooks interface. You send off that invoice and here's a great bit of advice. With FreshBooks, you automatically can take credit card payments. Turns out your clients would love to get that bill off their desk. They just want to, they, you want to make it as easy for them as it is for you to send the invoice. And FreshBooks does that. It turns out because you're using FreshBooks, because you can get credit card payments, you're going to get paid an average of twice as fast with FreshBooks. No more chasing clients for payments. No more taking those checks to the bank. You can get credit card payments right in your invoice. Plus, with FreshBooks, you always know which invoices have been sent, which invoices have been paid, even more importantly, which invoices have been viewed but not paid. You can send out automatic uh, payment reminders, late payment reminders. You can get it as, as gentle or as rough as you need to. They are fantastic. You, they can do more all the time, too, because it's a web page. You know, it's a web app. They're always adding new features. They added recently added uh, proposals. Uh, you can create proposals with rich text content and images and customizable sections. You can bill for time by client and specific project. They just added new languages. They just added Spanish and Dutch as an option for invoices, estimates, and proposals. So one of the reasons they saved my life is because I was invoicing a Canadian company. So I had to invoice in Canadian dollars, and that was a pain. FreshBooks does it all. They handle every currency automatically. Payment schedules can be set up from the FreshBooks iOS app, which means you can now see attachments uh, on existing proposals. You can get it all set up. 
have an automatic payment schedule, automatic invoicing. They've got push notifications letting you know when a client hasn't actually seen your invoice or when they have and they haven't paid it, when it's due. You can see client comments. It's just, uh, it's so easy. It's so beautiful. It's so simple. And you can do it right now, free for the next 30 days if you go to freshbooks.com slash NSS. If you hate sending invoices, <laughs> that's not why you got into business, right? To, to make invoices? You really ought to check it out. Freshbooks.com slash NSS. Basically, it's accounting made easy. It's, it starts with the invoices, but it gets everything done for you. Freshbooks dot com slash NSS. See that number there? 97% of small business owners recommend FreshBooks. That's pretty good. FreshBooks.com slash NSS. All right, I want to show you this. Now, I have to say I'm not a trained professional like Rick is. In fact, I had, I'd only played with dashboard cams and pretty much decided that they were just kind of junky and not useful. But I saw this. I think it was you who told me about OWL. I did tell you about OWL. So this was kind of one of those... Uh, you know, new startups. Uh, the guy who created it uh, did the iPod. Yes. He did the drop cam. He's really an expert in this Hollow kind of... Hollow lens. Hollow lens. He's a, it, I have to say, I like the industrial design a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, it is expensive. $300. Currently, they're selling it for $350 with a year of LTE. Now, that's kind of intriguing. And I'll tell you why you might want the LTE. That's the whole point of this. This is the, uh, you know, the easy to use install card and they have videos. Installation was really simple. This is the, the OWL cam. It's, it's small. It has, a, but cameras on both sides. So this is a, a dash cam that, this is the screen you're looking at as you drive, but see there's a camera up in the corner there. And then there's a camera on this side as well. Oh. This camera is 4K. And so Rick, you were talking about the ability to zoom in. Having a 4K camera on the, on the out, bound pick uh, camera really is great because you can read license plates. I'll show you some video in uh, just a second. So that's the selfie cam on the front. This is the selfie cam. Mm -hmm. Now it's more than a selfie cam and this is what makes the owl cam very interesting. See these two lights? It has very bright LEDs that are triggered. If somebody breaks into your car, you're going to see it. Now that's what's really interesting. Most cameras connect to the cigarette lighter. This does not. It connects to the OBD2 port. That means it has power even when your car is off. It only draws power. It doesn't draw data from the OBD2 port. And look at the industrial design. You see that? You put that right in. That's that port that's under your steering wheel. All cars since 1996 have it. I use this on my Tesla Model X. It will not work on a Model 3 because I guess it doesn't have an OBD2 port. So you want to check. And you see, once you plug that in, it's very easy to plug it in with no tools. This is magnetic. It's kind of like the MagSafe adapter. It snaps right in. There's a lot of wire and it's very thin, flexible wire. And it turns out, without having an installer do this, you can tra there's the OBD2 port. You can trail the thin wire around the door jam. And then they even provide a little tuck tool that tucks it into the crack between your dashboard and windshield. So it really is out of sight. They even provide you with some twist ties. I love the tuck tool. It's I know, genius. I love it. Then they give you a variety of mounts and of different sizes depending on how high you need the camera to be. One edge of the mount goes tucking in there where the wire is. The other edge will actually support the camera. This is the size that it came uh, with. And there's a suction cup that, that uh, suctions it to the windshield. And then the camera goes into a magnetic, magnet, magnetized socket like that, so you can easily rotate it and position it just right. You'll then put the other side of the magnet, uh, a magnetic uh, connector in the camera. So even if you accidentally yanked on the wires, nothing's going to get hurt. It's just going to pop right off just like a MagSafe adapter. I think that's kind of nice industrial design. Let me, yeah, you probably should do this before you put the camera in. So let me show you as kind of some of the other features of this. This has LTE built into it. It uses the AT&T network. So if you get good connectivity with AT&T uh, where you are, this would be a good choice for you. Here's but you don't have you, to have AT&T, right? It just comes with you, that. It comes with it. And, it, and the, one of the reasons it's so expensive, they give you a year. Now, it's only, <laughs> you don't get unlimited use. You get 60 minutes a month. So that means you're not going to sit and watch out the window. But when the, when the camera's installed, as you can see, mine is not, you can actually see what's going on inside your car and outside your car while somebody else is driving it. If somebody breaks in, the camera is on and it will record that. In fact, it'll turn the lights on. And it's kind of like a Ring video doorbell, like our sponsor Ring, because it has a speaker and a microphone in it. And you can say, hey, what are you doing in my car? 
which is amazing. In fact, I talked to Lisa while she was driving the car. Kind of freaked her out. I probably should have warned her that <laughs> that capability. Well, I can imagine that once my daughter starts driving, if you slow know, down, she's, like, texting, like <laughs> put down your phone. You'll get notifications if something happens to your car. Look, somebody backed into your car. <laughs> You'll have complete video of it, which is very handy. This is the interface. Now it's early days on the app, and so some of the features that they're going to put in the app actually are not enabled yet, which mm. is kind of funny. They even say, coming soon, add a driver, coming soon. My account, well, it only uses iPhone right now, so you don't need to have an account. They're gonna add to Android 2 down the road. User manual, coming soon. So the, literally, I bought this the day you told me about it, got it the very, they got it Friday, the very first day it was mm -hmm. shipping. In fact, if you order it today, you won't be able to get it till yeah. March 31st. So let me just show you some video. I, I, actually, I'm gonna go back uh, a little bit here and show you the, the buttons. So if my camera were connected, I could right now go see a live view of the car. You see, I have 52 minutes left. Mm. So you're not gonna sit and watch that camera. It's using the LTE to connect. They will store it. If there's an accident or somebody breaks in, it immediately, you know, the theory being somebody's going to break in and then disconnect the camera. As soon as there's a break in, it starts sending still images up right away to the OWL servers. And then it'll send video later. OWL says if somebody breaks into your car and steals the OWL, they'll replace it free, <laughs> which is probably a good idea because this thing looks expensive. It looks like something somebody might want to steal. Uh, but of course, then you'll have video of them. Let me see if I can, uh, I, you know, I don't have to show you this because I think we have it connected. Do I have to reconnect? All right, we're gonna connect to the, um, the Apple TV here and I will What I love about this is directly. they, when I found out about it, they offered to send you us one it? and you, Leo said, no, 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 I don't want it. And then he just bought it himself. Cause. Well, I don't <laughs> like to get stuff sent to us, okay? I like to like I know, to try it makes it. sense. This is honest to goodness. So while the camera's in the car, if you're driving, of course, it'll record accidents automatically. Oh, it's trying to connect to the camera. Sorry, the camera's not uh, not powered up. I should be able to see this without... Oh, no, I know. I'm pushing the wrong button. Let's go to uh, my clips. I was trying to watch it live. So this is just a recording out the front. Um, notice, by the way, it has a name. So when you want it to record, you say, OK, presto. And it goes, bling, just like an echo. Mm -hmm. And then you give it a name. Somebody was talking, and that's the name it got. Oh. This was, uh, so it, I asked to record. It went back about 30 seconds. I asked to record right about now, because we saw, we saw Tanner walking down the road. We said, oh, let's pick him up. So this is the video of it. Um, I can actually show you from the other angle. You want to see? This is the funny thing because it's it's recording at the same time as your. Um, let me turn the audio on. At the same time as you're recording out the window. Are you hitchhiking? See, it recorded that as the. Tanner's coming. So you're getting both <laughs> angles, right? You're getting like both my, angles. My face. It's a 1440 out the front. It's a little lower quality out the back, presuming you don't need to read license plates out the back. Here's the night view. It is not a great nighttime camera, but probably good enough. You see, it's a little bit grainy. Um, I'm, uh, because it's 1440, I, could, I can zoom in and read those uh, license plates if I want to. So if somebody backed into me, I'd be able to see it. I, l I think that they've really put a lot of uh, intelligent design into this. It's kind of a, uh, easy to install. It looks good once it's on your dashboard. In fact, I can show you, I think I have a picture here uh, of what it looks like on my dashboard. There we go, like this. Oh. So it's not its not huge. No. Now, uh, the wire's showing because I knew I was going to be ripping it out for uh, today's show, so tool. I didn't use the tuck tool, but I will <laughs> after the show today. What it, do you think, Rick? Yeah, it, it's uh, interesting. Uh, <clears throat> what really sets it apart from other dash cams is that, you know, it, it's a 24-hour security uh, exactly, yeah. device, too. And yeah. uh, I like it. It's a pretty clever way that they get their continuous power. They get it from the OBD2 port uh, rather than, you know, hard having to hardwire it or use a backup battery or something mm -hmm. like that, which, yeah, is, I, which I, is pretty much what other dash cams do. Right. I mean, it is a lot more expensive than most other uh, dash cams. I love this idea because you're getting audio and a picture from the car if you get pulled over. If, you know, everything that's going on in the car can be saved and recorded. You get 60 clips or 60 minutes per month. For the first year, that's free. After that, you are going to have to pay uh, an LTE connection fee. So that's something to keep in mind. It has GPS built in. 
It has a digital compass, so you will be able to get coordinates where something happened. You will be able to know what direction you were headed. It has Wi-Fi as well, so if you're you know, somewhere with Wi-Fi, it'll work a little bit better. We have Wi-Fi in the garage, so it works a little bit better in the garage to, to turn it on. And, of course, that LTE connection. Uh, Three-axis gyroscope, accelerometer, and three temperature setters, uh, uh, sensors. It, it impact detection, braking detection, instant video reports. I, you know, I'm not an expert like you, Rick. I know you will be reviewing this at some point, and I'll look forward to seeing your review. Um, but I have I, to say, I, I, I like this a lot. I'm, uh, I'm an, I would, in the past, perhaps have said, no, I don't need a dashboard cam. I'm going to keep this uh, working. It works very nicely uh, in my I test. think we would like to definitely take a look at that and yeah. include it in uh, one of our next updates. The, the next update, we'll see what the wire cutter says. Very easy setup. See that QR code? You just pair it to your phone by pressing the add camera button and it picks up the QR code. Couldn't be simpler. Um, it, they, I think this is, this is kind of a sample of, you know, kind of modern Apple-inspired industrial design where they want to make it really easy for the user. Mm -hmm. And I think they've done some things very clever. That bright, those LED lights, by the way, are very bright. And the voice activated. Have you seen a voice activated camera, Rick? Uh, there are some out there, uh, but they, you know, the uh, voice <laughs> commands are kind of iffy sometimes. This one worked really flawlessly in a variety of conditions. I was able to quickly record it. But remember, it's always recording, so this is just, you can actually, sh you can actually share a clip on Facebook and Twitter as well. It has a share button on it. So I think that's the idea is that you might want to share your, uh, your uh, experiences on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, again, not an expert. I haven't tested a bunch of them like you have, Rick. I can't wait to read your review. But my preliminary uh, feeling about this is this is, I was ready to hate this. This is really a nice device. I think they've done a very nice job. So Rick, we'll keep an eye out for the uh, review, thewirecutter.com. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Thank so. you. I appreciate it. Great to talk to you. Um, I guess that's, I'm just trying to think if there's anything I uh, left out. I think that's pretty much my experience. I'll, I'll probably give you over the weeks to come a m more a better, more nuanced mm -hmm. review of it. But I am pretty impressed. If you can afford 300 bucks, 350 with the LTE. So this has become the car episode all of a sudden. Yeah, tell me about this. Um, so this next segment is something that is designed specially for lazy people like me and other people who are not just lazy. Uh, there was an app that I heard about. It's called Filled. This to me is cuckoo. <laughs> they will come. It that it sounded cuckoo to me too. They'll come and deliver gas to your car. My it's idea a little was like pickup truck with a big gas tank yeah. on it. Should we take a look at the? Yeah. This? Let's take a look. I'm happy to be chatting today with Michael Bior, CEO of Filled, an app that delivers gas straight into your tank. Welcome, Michael. Glad to be here. So I totally understand getting food or groceries or other things delivered to you because you don't want to leave the house because of weather or, you know, you have a kid at home, a baby sleeping. But if you're going to need gas in your car, you're going to be leaving the house and getting in your car, presumably. So is this just for super lazy people like me? It's actually not. Um... And it's there's a bigger there's a bigger picture uh, item that's going on here, and it's one of the things that's actually driving our business, and that is, that is that the last what's called the last mile of fueling infrastructure. So in this case, gas stations they're actually disappearing. Um, when you look across the U.S. in the last 10 years, the number of gas stations across the U.S. is down by 25 to 30 percent. When you look in the major metropolitan areas, it's down by more like 40 to 50 percent. And the reason is, is that gas stations are a challenging business. Most of them are single, proprietor owned. Um, the value of the land that they're on is actually worth more than the gas station itself. Therefore, a lot of them are selling the gas station and putting in a Lululemon or a Starbucks. What we step in and do is provide that last mile of refueling without all of the costs that go with putting up a gas station. The benefit is both to the consumer where they can choose to get gas whenever they want, at the time they want, at a convenient location they want, with a very inexpensive price point in terms of a service fee, and at pretty much the same price point of, of a gas price that they pay for the price per gas in the neighborhood around them. And the same thing for businesses, which is we offer businesses or fleets the same type of convenience, cost effectiveness and price points that they really can't get anywhere else because 
they'd have to be paying somebody to drive around and shuttle the car to actually get fuel into the vehicle. So it's much more than just laziness. It's really now about those areas where you can refuel are disappearing. Let's talk about the service fee and how do you also work out how much you're gonna pay for the gas? We charge a service fee depending on the time and the length of the window that you choose. So let's say you wanted to order for tonight, right? And you said you want, you didn't care when the order was for tonight. So um, you know what, if it comes anytime tonight, I'm okay. So I choose the 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. window. That's a big window for us. So our algorithms have time to optimize when our delivery can be for your vehicle that tonight. So we'll charge you $2.99 as a delivery fee. So under three bucks to deliver uh, as a delivery fee for that. If uh, by chance you really wanted to make sure that we delivered, let's say tomorrow between nine and noon, because you had a you had something you had to go to do tomorrow afternoon, we would charge you seven dollars and ninety nine cents for tomorrow because one, it's during the day when it's busier, and two, it's in a much smaller window. So our prices go from anywhere from you know two ninety nine to seven ninety nine, and if you have multiple cars we'll get it down to a buck 99 per vehicle. The way we determine the price of the gas is we basically look at the location of where you're fueling. So basically where the vehicle is. And then we look at all of the gas stations that are in that general area. And we charge you the average price of the gas stations in that area. So we got a chance to try out the service. And uh, one of your drivers, Nain, uh, he was so pleasant. I really enjoyed talking to him. He told me a little bit about his story. He's a full-time employee. He used to be a trucker. And this has given them the opportunity to stay home with uh, his family at night, um, as opposed to being a trucker where he was gone for days at a time. Now, are all of your drivers full-time employees? All of our drivers are full-time employees. We want to ensure that when we show up at your door, you feel comfortable with the person driving the vehicle. So all of our drivers are commercial rated drivers. Um, which means that they have a commercial rating on their driver's license. They're also what's called hazmat certified. So they're certified to be carrying, you know, more hazardous type materials. Um, and somebody like Naeen, where typically if you have a commercial driver's license, you are typically driving more long haul type routes as a trucker. Um, we're offering you as an employee of Phil the ability to work uh, regular hours, right? You're working a day shift, you're working a night shift, but where you're at home at night um, or you're at home during the day, depending on what kind of shift you want to run, you want to work, but you're not on the long haul off for out for seven days uh, driving a typical long haul trucker route. That's important to us because we benefit from it in terms of we get one, a highly skilled driver. Um, two, we get a driver who uh, is uh, really proud to be a part of the company and we benefit in, in terms of doing that, which is we give them full benefits uh, as an employee. We give them equity in the company as well. Um, and we get an incredible customer service spokesperson for us, which is the driver can some be, sometimes be the first customer touch point that Field has with a customer. And we want that to be an incredible experience. And there's nothing better than, you know, having a great driver like Naeem be that first experience. So there's two big elephants in the room. I'm sure you, you're always waiting for this question. And that's electric cars and ride sharing, both of which would mean requ we would be required to fill up our cars less or maybe not at all. Uh, what do you say to, to, to that feature? <laughs> Ride sharing is one that we are actively involved with. So some of the large uh, ride sharing companies and in even car sharing companies, whether it's the Ubers of the world or the, or the Lyfts of the world, um, you know, we fill many of those drivers vehicles. And so those will continue to happen, which is they're having the same issues about making it easy for me to refuel my vehicle after use. And in fact, one of the things that's very valuable about filled is it allows ride sharing to be actually far more economical because the ride share driver can be operationally more efficient by not having to adjust his route to go refill his car at a gas station that's somewhere far away. They can set it up so that they're refueled along the way at a convenient location and have that set up uh, appropriately, right? So that's kind of one. 
The other is things like car sharing, where large partners, we already f fill customers like Mercedes Cardigo in Vancouver, Canada, in Seattle and in Portland, where there are large car sharing fleets um, where they're refueled by us, where those fleets are distributed throughout, uh, let's say a large metro like Seattle, where a consumer can come in, get into a car, drive it anywhere, get out of the car, um, and leave that car there for another consumer to get in, share that ride, and then take it somewhere else. Uh, we fill that car. Uh, we get. We have access to the uh, knowledge of what's in the car in terms of the fuel level, the location of the car, being able to lock and unlock the car so that we can get in and out of fueling that car in under two minutes and do that again at a far more cost effective way than anybody could today. Saving in this case, let's say Mercedes or, or, um, or uh, any of the other players that we're working with uh, a significant amount of operational cost. Then when I look forward to you know where we are from a EV perspective um, or electric vehicle perspective, it's one of the things that we've thought about from the very beginning of Field. And our infrastructure and how we've built our trucks and how we've built our model is actually what we call fuel independent. The trucks that we f come and fuel you with and the thing, the truck that you saw Naeem come in and fill your car with or your vehicle with you can imagine that same truck actually having an electric charger on the back. Um, and so those are called energy rigs. What we have on the back of our trucks are called energy rigs. And those rigs can be either, they could be fuel based, they could be electric based. And let's say in the future, hydrogen is an alternative fuel. Uh, they could be hydrogen based. And our infrastructure today is designed to be a very scalable, very flexible, um, infrastructure for this last mile fueling so that regardless of the vehicle you want or the energy type you need, we actually have the platform that will do it for you. Same interface, I open up my app, I look at the schedule of time that I, I need to get filled at, I'm looking at the location I need to get filled at, and in this case I'm choosing the type I need. Do I need regular or unleaded fuel or do I need what kind of electric charge do I need? So. In that particular case, that's something that will be built into our platform and something that is part of the direction of where we're going. And so where is Field available now? Field is available in four metros today. So the Bay Area is one metro uh, where we're available today and we have been for the longest uh, here, probably about a year and a half now. Uh, we're available in Vancouver, Canada, Seattle um, and Portland. Uh, and then pretty soon, probably next 60 days, you'll start seeing us pop up in about three to four metros in the East Coast. Thank you so much for explaining the service. Michael Buer, CEO of Filled. The app is available on Android and iOS and can be found at filld.com. Thanks so much. Real pleasure. Thank you. It's a lot of, I like a lot of products. Uh, like this that we talk about delivery products, you can, it's frustrating because only a few people can get it. I know. But this is really, uh, actually, technically, they don't even come up here, right? You have no. to be in San Francisco. No, they, they yeah. came up here just, just to show off. But um, By I the way, it's great. It's great because apparently the entire staff got their car today. <laughs> so um, on my dime, I'm glad. <laughs> there, as somebody was asking, there's, uh, Jerry says there's 110 gallons per tank, and there's four, four tanks, tanks in that truck. But yeah. they have to because they have premium regular high, uh, what do they call it, high test? <laughs> is, that, is that really old fashioned? I'll have ethanol, please, and uh, diesel. So they, so 110 gallons, that means they could fill up a few cars, but they might have to go to the gas station themselves. I really like this. I mean, we get, you know, we, I check my email. You would, if you checked your email, you would see this too. But we get t tons and tons of people emails from you, people. Like, I ran out of gas. What can I do? No, no people saying, like, L check out my st startup. I have this yeah, startup. Yeah, oh, yeah, we do get a lot. And of those so things. this one's one that I thought was really interesting, really useful. I love this. I mean, I get anxious when my car isn't filled right. up. I usually fill it up when it's halfway because so I'm so anxious. If So you could have them come to your house in the middle of the night. Yeah. So the next morning you'd be filled up. But how do they get into the, the, the tank you pop the flap oh before you go to bed yeah if it's not it. yeah you just but yeah. yeah you you go and open the app and you say where you are you put your time in and then you pop the flap that makes sense and they close it when they're done yes they do. i i think there's it's interesting i'm trying to figure out the business model do they charge you more for gas 
Um, and it the pump price. Is it, it looks like it was around the same as what was around you, but then the you know there was the the price. You called it surge pricing, but if I say I have to have gas right now, they're going to charge me a little bit more. Not so it's per like, gallon, just per, per delivery. For the delivery yeah. fee. Yeah. yeah. So that I I like that because it's a convenience fee. You're yeah. Paying. I mean, I you know truthfully, who wants to pump gas? I mean, might be even if you went to a gas station, give the guy a couple of bucks to fill the tank. It's not so much different, right? No, I think so. And I, I mean, I, I, would, I would personally rather have a Lululemon than a gas station on my corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, gas stations are real problems. We have some areas in Petaluma that were gas stations that can't be used. They're Superfund sites now because leaky tanks mean that they has to be completely remediated. There's a place in the heart of downtown Petaluma that's just going to be a grassy field for the foreseeable future because nobody wants to spend a million dollars to, to remediate the soil from the leaky tanks. Mm -hmm. So actually, this is probably a very mm -hmm. good idea. It could also be like a benefit to employees. Like you could say, oh, Wednesday is gas day. I'm bringing the filled truck and everybody can get their gas tank filled. Isn't that a great idea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I drive an electric car. <laughs> it's time for the mailbag. On that note, here we go. Another fun-filled episode <gasps> of Mail. Pick this the one, one looks good. Want. Yes. I have email too, so that means you start. Okay, uh, what is the best charged battery to bring you with you when your fun phone runs out of charge? Same <laughs> questions for iPads. Carol wants to know this. You're talking about one of those like portable battery mm -hmm. packs. Oh, I, this is great. Now I have to say, I think they're pretty much commoditized now. It doesn't matter what you get, right? Any basic one, yeah. I mean, it depends on the amperage, right? The milliamperage or whatever. Yeah, so if, you know, and that's very directly related to size. This is Jerry's old, you know, year old anchor uh, anchor is a good name a n k e r uh, this you know you, i mean the differentiators are well it has two ports mm -hmm. and one for charging uh, but really the main thing you're going to look at and you'll see it, it's in the fine print i probably can't even read it is how many milliamp hours it has your phone is typically maybe 1500 to 2000 milliamp hours so you divide the total in the battery pack by how many in your phone add, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of waste. Um, so, you know, typically this is probably, this is probably 15,000 to 20,000 milliamp hours. That's a lot of juice. Depends what you want to charge. You've got some, okay. you've got some kind of differentiators I, here. I have got some fancy ones. Yeah. This one is from Fuelbox and it plugs into your wall. And then this little, this is the charger. This is the portable charger that you stick on top. It, it charges like that. So you just charge it, it's sitting there when you need it. It's ready to go. You grab it and you put it in it. it not only does it have the it USB, has the right it has this. Yeah. Nice. It has the connectors also built in. It has lightning and it also has USB, uh, micro USB in there. And then this one also has two plugs so you can plug you know, whatever else you need to plug in. But it has and, the cables too. Yeah, it has another lightning, another micro USB, and another spot for a USB. It's really nice. So you could, you know, you can almost tell by size. This is 5,200 milliamp hours. Uh, so this would charge your phone a couple of times over. That's not bad, mm -hmm. right? And then I also have the My Charge, which you asked about um, iPads and iPhones, but I was using uh, Jason's Pixel, and so I needed the USB-C. So this one, this the My Charge comes in all kinds of um, different, you know, you can have lightning cables, but this is USB-C, and this also plugs in the wall. Like, I really like that they plug in the wall, because then I just stick them in the outlet, and you they're there. You just keep it there, and it's always charged. Yeah, and then you just close ready. that up, and then yeah. stick it in your pocket. Yeah. Um, so I like ones that are a little bit fancier. And a little Something. bit more expensive. Typically, yeah. an anchor device like the one Jerry had, 20, 30 bucks, you're going to spend more for the fancy stuff mm -hmm. that you have. Also, since you said you're, how much was that one? Uh, 49.99. Ah, that's pretty expensive. That's a $50. They're not. I mean, you can get them price. cheap, but that's it's the same. It's like 20, you get what you pay for. But 20,000 milliamp hours means you have enough juice in here to charge an iPad and an iPhone. The other thing you're going to want to look at is, is how many watts come out of the port because an iPad needs 11 watts. Uh, a phone only needs more like five or fewer watts. So you want to make sure that if you're going to try to charge a laptop or an iPad or something that takes a lot more wattage, that the device, the, the battery can put out that much. Mm -hmm. But really, I think, you know, that there's a pretty smooth curve between uh, amount of capacity, size, and uh, capabilities. $50 for this one, 20,000 20, milliamp hours, 21,000, that's a lot. This is a, this is a pretty monstrous battery. But uh, be careful, don't just buy one off of Amazon because well, they can be... you know where people get them? At the gas station. 
bad idea. <laughs> yeah. But that, thanks to Phil, <laughs> we'll yes. never have to worry about that exactly. again. Exactly. But where I, are you going to get your pine tree shaped air freshers? <laughs> I know, that's true. You and don't your Slim Jims. Amazon. Yeah, at Amazon, <laughs> exactly. I have this great idea now. It's called Slim Jim and Cigarette Delivery Service. We'll bring you cigarettes and Slim Jims to anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the guy from Phil could fill up yeah. But I need the ones that plug in the wall because my kids always tick. The, the other cheaper ones that I got, they would em. take them and then not recharge them. So this one, it goes yes. back on the wall. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they don't exactly. get to use it. Exactly. What was your question? Why is there air? <laughs> Mm -hmm. My question is, hello, hello, says Caesar. I came to read Caesar's email, <laughs> not to bury him. I am looking to upgrade from my phone, iPhone S. It still works fine. I just need to get a larger size screen. Yes. Yeah, now when you, you look at it compared to the modern iPhones, it looks like a postage stamp. But here's his question. Is buying a refurbished iPhone 6 or 6S from Apple a good way to go? Thank you. I think yes. Yeah, so refurb is a funny thing. Refurbished can mean a variety of things. It could mean that something got caught in a landslide, was completely demolished. They took it, they polished it up, painted it, and they're selling it as refurbished. Don't buy that. But if you're buying it from the original manufacturer, an Apple iPhone from Apple, that's a different matter. And they're going to offer the same warranty. They're probably reselling devices that were never used. There were open boxes, they can't sell them as new. That means you won't get as much of a discount, but absolutely safe to buy it from Apple directly. And they give you a new battery. Yeah, fresh battery. New battery, Good. fresh case, Good. one year So they're really warranty. refurbishing yeah. is what's happening. I've never bought a refurbed iPhone, but I have bought a refurbed MacBook. I did that last year. We did a whole long segment about what MacBook to get your teenager in school, and I got the MacBook Pro, and she loves it. We've How much no did problems. you save buying the refurb? I, it, it's not a ton of money for it's the Mac. I think it was dollars. like, yeah, three yeah. or four hundred dollars, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can get the seven, you can get, I don't know if, were they selling the six as refurb? Success. I'll tell you, that is as good as new, as far as I'm concerned. If you're getting a, a from Apple, that is as good as new. I, I don't know if they go two generations back, right? You know, they're, uh, they're, 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 what they have varies. Um, so I don't know if you're going to be able to get a six, but you can definitely get a seven. And I, I don't know, do we recommend people get sixes at this point? I think a 6S would be okay. I wouldn't get a six. Yeah, I don't think there are any refurbished, and I don't know if they don't ever have them or they just don't have any right now. And they may. Apple probably doesn't want to sell them. Now, the other thing you could look at is an iPhone SE, which isn't a huge screen. It's an iPhone mm -hmm. 5 size screen, but it's the 6S internals. Mm -hmm. That would probably be a fine thing to get. And Apple doesn't charge a whole lot for the SE. The rumor is they're going to have a new SE come this fall, that there'll be three new iPhones, and one of them will be a replacement for the SE. I, you know, if it, you got to see how big a screen you want. If a six, you want a 6S Plus or a 6 Plus, that's a lot bigger. But an iPhone SE, that's a that's a bigger screen than the 4S, and I think a pretty good choice. Four-inch display as opposed to five inches. What about buying, like, on eBay or, like, Facebook <sighs> Marketplace? Sometimes you get a great deal. Sometimes it works out fine. Or Gazelle, our sponsor. Sometimes it works out. For, I'd rather get it from Gazelle than eBay. eBay, their risk is somebody's selling you a stolen phone or a phone that doesn't work, and it's hard to track them down and hard to get your money back. Uh, it's I hear this all the time, especially with iPhones. You bought an iPhone, and you can't get into it because the previous owner hasn't unlocked it. They have to unlock it properly before they sell it to you, right? They have to take it off, find my iPhone, and enter their I Apple I iCloud password and everything to unlock it so that somebody else can use it. So you got to make sure. On the other hand, plenty of people got great deals from eBay and other places. Gazelle's a little different because they stand by it. You get a warranty. They do check it. They tell you exactly what the condition is. And if you don't like it, it's very easy to send it back to them. So I'd stick with, remember now everybody, including all the carriers, buy used phones back. So if you're getting it from a legit company like that, I think it's a lot safer. eBay's always a risk. Sometimes you get an amazing deal. I mean, there are plenty of people who just say, you know, I got a new phone, I'm going to sell it on eBay. And, and those people are honest. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing you might want to do is take advantage of Apple's uh, battery replacement for the 6 and 6S. In fact, I would absolutely do that immediately. So that way you get a fresh battery. And if you're buying it from a third party, do that for sure. There we go. Mm -hmm. How about that? You guys are going to Austin without me. 
your old stomping grounds. My own stomping. I'm going to hold down the fort here. Yeah, well, at least you, you, you've got the dress to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to go to Austin or to stomp? Or uh, to yeah, I should wear this fort. to Austin, should I? Okay. Yeah, we're going to be in Austin. I'm excited with Stacey Higginbotham. So we're doing a meetup uh, at Friedman's Barbecue on Friday, March 8th. If you'd like to come by, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Jerry says it's Thursday, March 8th. The meetup. Did I not say that? You said Friday. No, I said Thursday, March 8th. Thursday. Friday, March 9th, we're going to have an event, but it's at 8.30 in the morning at Antone's. Antone's is uh, the Capital One House. That's part of the South by Southwest Festivities. Festivity. Did that, the festivity? I think it's festivity. Uh, they're starting, uh, the, the interactive festival starts, I think, Thursday night or Friday morning. And do you have to have a badge to get into you either You do not. Those? You're more than welcome. Please come by Antone's, 8.30 a.m. on Friday the 9th, or the night before, March 8th, Thursday, we'll be there 5.30 to 7.30 at Friedman's. That's another barbecue joint. It's barbecue all the time in Austin. I'm really excited. What will I be able to watch from here? Uh, nothing from here because we're not going to do a live stream, but okay. we will be making a special out of the panel. It's going to be a panel on, I'm, I'm excited about this. We, we hear so much about security. We were talking about Equifax. We talk about uh, Spectre and Meltdown. But the question I think real people want to know is, well, what does this mean to me? What issues are, should I worry about? I mean, it sounds like it's terrifying out there, but what's really going to impact me and what should I be doing? And so we have some great security experts, Stacey Higginbotham from Stacey on IoT and This Week in Google, uh, along with a couple of really great security professionals. And we'll be talking about what cons what's practical security for real people in this uh, day and age. So it'll be a great panel, about an hour and a half long. You come see us live, it'll be a lot of fun, but if not, don't worry, we're going to make a, a, a complete video available uh, on our Twit Live specials. It's kind of fun. Capital One asked us to come down. You know, they're the credit card, uh, what's in your wallet, right? Mm -hmm. Jennifer Garner is going to be on the panel. It should be very exciting. And Morgan <laughs> Freeman. I can't wait. No, no they're not going to be there. They're not um, going to be there, so don't expect it. If people are looking for more information in their email inbox about us, what should they do? <laughs> Subscribe to our newsletter. Oh, I was almost going to call for a help <laughs> line. Uh, subscribe to our email, our newsletter. Jerry makes it. He works really hard on it. Twit.tv slash newsletter. It's really good. This is pretty much, the, I don't think we're going to ask for this again. Uh, last chance to take the survey. If you haven't done it, we want to get each and every one of you represented. Twit.tv slash survey. Just a couple of questions so we can better know you. And tell our advertisers who's listening. We won't tell you anything personal, don't worry. We not, you know, this is completely anonymized. We, we're just going to give them the overall numbers. So twit.tv slash survey, twit.tv is for the newsletter. And for this show, twit.tv slash NSS for new screensavers. We do this show every Saturday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2300 UTC. If you want to watch live, you could do that easily at twit.tv slash live, but we also offer on demand versions of the show. That's when you go to twit.tv slash NSS or subscribe in your favorite podcast appliance. And what if people want to see more of you? Stop Leo? it. Just stop it. <laughs> You'll find Megan Maroney on Tech News Weekly every Thursday, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, 22.30 UTC. And, of course, with me on Tuesdays, 9 a.m., mm -hmm. bright and early, or when I decide to show up, roughly 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, 8, 1,700, mm -hmm. 1,800 thereabouts, mm -hmm. UTC. And we're going to be talking to one of the developers of I'm Alto's Odyssey. This is Odyssey. excited. This is, the f uh, this is going to be very interesting because they did, the, did it for the uh, Android device for the first time. So we'll talk about what it's like developing for Android versus iOS. Some of the ins and outs of being a developer mm -hmm. uh, on iOS today. That should be a lot of fun. This is a great game. This is, is that really sandboarding fun. game you showed last week. Mm -hmm. So a good show coming up on Tuesday. Thank you, Megan Maroney. Thank you, Leo Laporte. Thank you all for watching us, and we'll see you next time on the new screensavers. Bye-bye.